because sometimes I like training at commercial gyms. Um, I like using the machine sometimes, but I'll also like staying abreast of what's going on because I can just be in my garage and cut off from the world. And then I go to, to these commercial gyms and I'm like, oh my God, this is, real, this is what people are doing. This is what, how people are training. And you realize how bad people's form is. Them form, teach them how to fish, right? Like don't just, some trainers think, I'm gonna just never teach my client anything so they're always dependent upon me. And that's not the way, it, it works better when you teach them as much as you can because they might only train with you six months. You want them to train for a lifetime. But you want them excited about their strength level. She needs to get her elbows between her legs. Now I will tell you that some people who have like short tibias and long torsos, they get to the bottom and their elbows aren't between their legs. <laughs> and it's not that they're not going deep enough, it's their anatomy. So this isn't with everyone. But I don't want her elbows out here like this because then they'll hit her legs. I need her elbows in. So elbows in, notice how she's holding the dumbbell. It's like a goblet. That's why it's called a goblet squat. And then she goes down, she takes a moderate width stance and her knees are way up. And her elbows will be right in between the legs, right there. That's what you want. Elbows between the legs. She's nice and upright. This is a perfect squat. I'm also looking at the feet. And I'm looking at the feet and I want to make sure that she doesn't push and pronate. I want to make sure her feet don't cave in. Or I don't want to make sure she doesn't rise up off of her heels onto her toes. Okay, let me see. Do another rep. Okay. Her feet look good, so she's pressing. So I don't think this is dangerous, but the way I try to teach it, the way I do it, is my gaze will go like this. I kind of keep the, my head and neck in, in alignment with my spine, but it's not critical. So you don't need to be the guy on Instagram that's like, you know, cervical hyperextension, you suck. So, <laughs> <laughs> so from here, I sit back, watch my shins. They stay vertical, okay? You will not see my knees move forward at all. I sit back, the bar scrapes my legs, so think paint your legs or skim your legs. I sit back, I go right below the kneecaps, my, my chest is up, I have a good arch. Come up. So, just like this. If I do five frog pumps. Mm -hmm. Which do you feel more, this or the lights in? This? Yeah. So, and it's funny because, keep going, I feel this in my lower and upper glutes. Like, so I'm feeling upper glutes and lower glutes function uniquely from one another. But I'm feeling your upper and lower and it's working both very well. Um, <laughs> um, so, then, like, let's say I weigh, uh, I weigh like 240 pounds right now. Whatever that is in kgs, what is that, like 112 or something? I don't know. So say I weigh 112 kgs and I stay this way and I get way stronger. I put 100 pounds on my squat, 50 pounds on my bench, and 125 pounds on my deadlift in the next year. And I weigh the same. What will have to happen for me to gain all that strength? I have to gain some muscle. I mean, unless I just get amazing with my technique, but that doesn't usually happen, especially someone who's been lifting as long as me. So I have to gain muscle. So say I put on 10 pounds of muscle during this process. What also has to happen since I did not gain any weight? I have to lose 10 pounds of fat. So if you could, if we could take 10 pounds, slap on every one of you, slap 10 pounds of muscle on you and take 10 pounds of fat off, you'd look a lot You'd look, I don't want to say better, but you'd look a lot different. You'd be, God, I'm like afraid to say anything in this day and age. Um, you would probably be closer to being happy with your, you know, like for powerlifting. What I need to do, and I'm going to roll the bar all the way to the edge, to here. Because I don't want it back here, because I'm not going to unrack it here. And I need to know to set up so I get it all the way to the front. And then I want this bar about above my mouth and nose area. So now I have it in the right place, okay? And I kind of walk myself into position. So what this means is I want my shoulder blades together. I want them retracted. I don't want to be out like this. I want to be in like this. 
but I also want as much arch as I can get. So different people, different power lifters have different ways of setting up. Uh, from Brett, who did a practical presentation, which I thought was really, it was refreshing and engaging. And Brett is a really funny guy. Um, so it was quite cool to see. Less practical for myself because I'm an online coach, so I don't get in there um, dirty, although I do want to and I have done it before. Uh, everything he gave was really, really beneficial. And the main thing I took away from him is that we should avoid black and white thinking um, and guruism. So if you have all your athletes squatting in exactly the same way and you see someone come in and you try and get them to squat the same way again and they don't get on with it, it's not really the right thing. People have different anatomies. There's individuality, again, is huge. Um, you can have something best on paper then best in practice is completely different. And he talked about his clients, different uh, widths of stance, high bar, low bar. Some people can't do certain exercises and you just have to be okay with that. Um, and I thought that was really, really beneficial that you should kind of find your form and perfect that for powerlifting. Um, if you do better with a certain stance or a certain form and you can get all the basics correct, your heels are on the ground, you're getting depth, your chest is up as far as it needs to be in neutral, then you can kind of 